Welcome to Now in the 90s, where we look at the game releases of 30 years ago today. This week, a Battletoads game, a Battletoads game, and a Battletoads game. Nope, I don't have a brain tumor. That's actually what happened this week. I'm your host, Jared, and today is June 23rd, 1993. Hot off the surprising success of the original, The Toads got a sequel. Released in June 1993 for the Super Nintendo was Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Rash and Pimple set out to rescue fellow Toad Zits and defeat the evil Dark Queen by beating the crap out of everything in their way. Run, jump, punch, and combo enemies. Certain attacks will cause the Toads to transform into cartoony forms like ram horns, a giant spiked boot, or stone hands. Gameplay variety comes during vertical scrolling segments, that one dang level where you're on the back of a snake, and a few fast-paced speeder sections. Of course, the entire game is available to play in two-player co-op. Battletoads began life as a competitor to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, complete with plans of being a multimedia property. They were introduced to the world through the now infamously difficult NES game released in June 1991, created by Rare. It sold super well, and the Battletoads were positioned to be a prime competitor to the Ninja Turtles and could actually succeed at it. Rare was ready to go all in. In 1993, Rare released 10 games. Eight of those 10 games was a Battletoads game and or a port of it. The original was hyped in 1991. The franchise got a ton of installments in 1993. What, what was their plan for 1992? Well, Thanksgiving Day, November 29th, 1992, premiered the Battletoads cartoon series. My heroes. Man, those are the most totalicious words I ever heard. What a remarkable little proton diffractor. Actually, that's a fountain pen. Let me have it before you hurt yourself. Let's hear it. Toads rule! It lasted one episode. The Super Nintendo game is the third Battletoads installment, following up the immensely popular NES title and the Game Boy game from 1991. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs is very similar to the NES original. It does have a few new stages and a few familiar returning ones. Also, there are playable differences between the two playable characters. Rash and Pimple each have their own set of special attack animations. There's also multiple endings, depending on how well you do in the final stage. There's also a bit more plot in this game compared to the original. A lot of this is thanks to the Battletoads comic. The comic appeared in Nintendo Power issue 25 in 1991, and is heavily considered to be the canonical backstory of the Battletoads, since a lot of the comic is referenced in Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. It was written by Guy Miller, an employee of Rare, who is also credited as a designer of the NES Battletoads game, but not listed on any of the other ones. More Battletoads coming was a big deal. To help give you an idea, Nintendo Power issue 49's cover is Battletoads. The issue itself briefly goes over some stages from the SNES game before making way for the other games. As for reviews at the time, it was really liked. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave it the Editor's Choice Gold Award with an average score of an 8.25 out of 10. GamePro Magazine gave it a 4.25 out of 5. And Nintendo Power gave it a 3.6 out of 5. The only port that Battletoads and Battle Maniacs would ever know is one for the Sega Master System in 1996. It's barely finished, barely works, and is barely fun, and was only released in Brazil. Now imagine having a rash in your pocket. Also released in June 1993 was Battletoads in Ragnarok's World for the Nintendo Game Boy. Battletoads in Ragnarok's World is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Play as the Battletoad Zits as you run, jump, and punch every enemy that comes your way. Perform different combos, defeat bosses, and get ready for some stage variety on top of speeder bikes. Battletoads in Ragnarok's World, even with a fancy name, is ostensibly a port of the NES original. There was a Battletoads for Game Boy already, which was its own game with its own levels. In Ragnarok's world, there are some changes made over the original. You can only play as Zits. There is no two-player support whatsoever. A few levels got rearranged, and a few of the levels from the original are missing entirely. Battletoads and Ragnarok World for the Game Boy was also covered by Nintendo Power in the Battletoads-themed issue 49. It only got a couple of pages with the usual overlays of a handful of early stages for the game. It was also reviewed by Nintendo Power in the same issue. It got a 
3.6 out of 5. The same score they gave the new Super NES game. GamePro Magazine also reviewed it, where they erroneously called it Battletoads 2, and gave it high scores all around, despite noting that it's basically a less exciting version than the NES original. However, there was one Battletoads game that was hyped up above all the others, also released in June of 1993, was Battletoads and Double Dragon, the ultimate team for the NES. Battletoads and Double Dragon is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Play as any of the three Toads and as either Lee brother. Run, jump, and punch your way through numerous levels, defeating bosses at the end. Perform combo attacks, hang from ledges, and use weapons found on the ground. Fight iconic Battletoads enemies like rats and pigs alongside famous Double Dragon enemies like Abobo and Willy. And of course, survive the gauntlet that is the Turbo Tunnel. All with two-player co-op. Now, in the 90s, one of the biggest franchises was Double Dragon. It had hit arcade games, a beloved trilogy of games on the NES, Super Double Dragon released on the SNES in late 1992, 1994 has the release of the Double Dragon live action movie, September 1993 is when the Double Dragon cartoon premieres. That cartoon is still bad, don't watch it. Or do. So when it was revealed that there was a new game that teams up Double Dragon with the Battletoads, it was a big deal. It was the Smash Brothers of 1993, a crossover never dreamed possible. Battletoads and Double Dragon was the marquee release of the onslaught of Battletoads games in June 1993. The Nintendo Power issue that covered all three games may have covered the other ones, but it was the NES crossover game that got the spotlight. It is a crossover game, but really it's just a Battletoads game. Even being in the game and having their own attack animations, Billy and Jimmy Lee control and play just like a Battletoad. Most importantly, a major change this game has compared to all of the others is that while you're playing two-player co-op, you cannot harm each other. It's also the first Battletoads game where all three Toads are finally playable characters. It's such a bizarre concept, an unexpected idea. How did such a crossover even come to be? According to programmer Paul Matchasek in an interview with Retro Video Gamer, it happened thanks to their agent. At the time, Rare mostly did contract work for other people's games and IPs. Some examples of this are the 1991 Beetlejuice video game for the NES and working on the NES port of Sid Meier's Pirates. Rare's agent, who Paul only describes as living in Miami, Florida and being named Joel, came to Rare saying that their publisher, Trade West, who published both games for Double Dragon and Battletoads in North America, asked, do you want to make a game with both of them in it? And Rare said, I. Rare then developed the game with basically virtually no input from Technos, the original developers of Double Dragon. Did that hype of a crossover translate to the game itself? Not as much as you'd think. Many reviewers saw it as a step backwards from the NES original, specifically on the graphics. GamePro Magazine score averaged at a 3.75 out of 5, the lowest of the three newest Battletoads games, and Nintendo Power awarded it an average of a 3.5 out of 5, the lowest they gave of the three games. Battletoads and Double Dragon would go on to get ported a lot. In December of 1993, it would release on the Super NES, the Game Boy, and Sega Genesis. The next Battletoads game would be the 1994 arcade game with three-player co-op and a lot more violence. Then, they would essentially evaporate, not getting a new game for many years. That is until Rash appeared as a playable character in the latest Killer Instinct game in 2016. Then, an all-new Revival reboot beat him up in 2020, simply titled Battletoads. Speaking of rashes, for everything else released this week, here's Editor Dylan. I think there's a cream for that. Man, I am sick of Battletoads. I feel like I edited the same segment three times in a row. So I'm happy to say those were the only Battletoads games that released this week. I mean, I'd take anything at this point, as long as it's something we haven't already covered. He said, knowing all too well that the very next game he was going to talk about was Double Dragon, released on the Lynx this week. And like the Game Gear version of Master System games, it's just a zoomed-in version of the arcade original. And by 1993 standards, I think it's a completely serviceable beat-em-up. That's not as fun as Battletoads. I'm sorry, I just can't escape the Toads, can I? But we've covered this game like three times now, so I'm fresh out of new things to say about it. In fact, the only thing I could say even less about would be a video game based off of, I don't know, a game show or something. He said, knowing perfectly well that everyone already guessed he's about to say Jeopardy for the Sega Genesis is a trivia game show that is exactly the same as the last time I talked about it, with one big difference. 
It says Deluxe Edition in the title now. That'll be $50, please, plus tax. You already know the drill. Answer trivia questions in a specific way and try to resist the temptation to put in profanity. And then fail. Look, the only possible way I could say even less about a game would be if it was the same exact game, only instead of covering a broad collection of topics like Jeopardy Deluxe Edition, it only covers something I know absolutely nothing about. He said overwhelmingly aware beyond a shadow of a doubt that the very next game was gonna be Jeopardy Sports Edition. Are you kidding me? What is happening? What is, like, what is my life now? Is this the Groundhog's Day of now in the 90s episodes? I feel like I'm stuck in an infinite loop. And the only way it could get worse is if the next game wasn't just trivia about sports, but condensed even further to just one sport in particular. He said, knowing full goddamn well when writing the script at 3 o'clock in the morning, he was going to say NFL Football Trivia Challenge for the Sega CD. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I miss Battletoads. Seven games released on these five consoles this week in 1993. Fun fact, the word Battletoad or Battletoads is said exactly 54 times in this video, which might explain the crazy deja vu. But I guess video games have always had fads and genres that overstay their welcome. Beat-em-ups, platformers, and samey sports games of the 90s are like the battle royales, survival roguelikes, and samey sports games of today. This show definitely cures some nostalgia blindness for me, but there's more than enough 90s goodness that makes up for it. Hopefully you feel the same way, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thank you, Dylan! In the collector's corner, Battletoads and Battle Maniacs for the SNES is still decently valuable. The game cartridge alone is currently worth about $40, and a complete one in box goes up to $170. Battletoads and Ragnarok's World isn't too bad either, just the Game Boy cart is worth $24, and the box and manual brings it up to $80. The biggest value gainer is Battletoads and Double Dragon The Ultimate Team. The game cartridge alone has a running value of $80, but if you have it with the box and the manual, it's then worth $485. And that's it for today. Next week, The Web Slinger returns, a television series you probably forgot existed, and then an all-new Mario game that nobody asked for. I'm your host, Jared, and this was Now in the 90s. Thank you so much for watching Now in the 90s. I want to thank some new patrons this week, like Scott Foster, Anthony Boyle, and Cameron. Please like the video and leave a comment down below, especially if you've played any of these Battletoads games before. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and if you already are a subscriber, thank you so much for watching this show every single Friday. If you want to help support the channel, please consider checking out our Patreon. Link is in the description down below. Do you remember where you were when you first played a Battletoads game? I do. It was at a neighborhood kids who lived down the street. We didn't really know them or like them that much, but they had Nintendo games that I never played before. And among them was Sword and Serpents and Battletoads. We played Battletoads two-player co-op. That's how I discovered you can hit each other. And that's what I realized. I hate those kids.